Hello! Today we are going to talk about alcohol. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell you to stop drinking. The story is inspired by Richard, 76 years old. He has been having balance problems for a few years, but his visit to my clinic was precipitated by quite a nasty fall which scared his family. And at the end, we're going to give you some top tips on how to better manage your medicines and also what to do with alcohol. Subscribe. <laughs> so, Richard, 76 years old. He's been having balance problems now for a few years, but recently he had quite a nasty fall. Fortunately, he didn't fracture anything. I went into his history and it transpired that Richard is a BP, British Petroleum uh, retired manager. He had quite a, a, a good job, traveled the world, and alcohol uh, has been always an important part of his life, uh, mainly for socializing, as you can imagine, he was going all over the place. And he maintained the same drinking habits all his life. So he's drinking currently one margarita for his lunch, with his lunch, and he enjoys two large glasses of red wine with his dinner. One glass before the dinner and the second glass during the dinner. That equals to five units of alcohol a day, which equals to 35 units of alcohol a day. A week. Let's remind ourselves that the currently recommended intake of alcohol shouldn't be more than 14 units a week and that should be spread throughout the week. So our Richard is consuming more than twice the recommended amount. His answer to that was however I've been doing this all my life and I haven't had any problems. Why do you think my poor balance and my fall has anything to do um, with alcohol? Well, I had a simple answer to that. I reminded, uh, reminded Richard of his age. Uh, I don't like talking about the age, but in some instances I have to. Richard is 76 and I reminded him that we can't go against the physiology. As we age, the, our body parts age as well and alcohol is metabolized by your liver and the liver function goes down as we grow older. The liver shrinks and the circulation in the liver goes down, so it is not as good uh, in metabolizing alcohol as it was, let's say, 30, 40 years ago. And absolutely, his body was tolerating that amount of, uh, amount of alcohol all these years back, but now that he's 76, it's doing the job much slower. So the amount of alcohol he's drinking now is probably far, far too much for him, even though he was tolerating it a few years back. So my recommendation to him was that he probably has alcohol circulating in his body 24 hours a day as his body doesn't have enough time to clear the amount of alcohol he had the day before. The next lunchtime, another margarita goes in, more uh, wine goes in, and of course, poor balance, the alcohol affects the brain functioning. And guess what? When we get into our 70s and 80s, the brain functioning is not as perfect as it was when we are in our 30s, 40s. So it affects the balance. And in his case, that evening, it was many other factors, of course, but alcohol played, excessive alcohol intake played a huge role in his fall. So from a, a pharmacist point of view, and I'm just gonna maybe mention a few points which echo your patient, is alcohol has, uh, it contributes to a multitude of problems, in, especially with people actually taking medicines. So let's just break this down into some key points. Alcohol is, has sedative properties, so it enhances the effect of other medicines which are used for sleepiness, anxiety, even epilepsy and other issues as well. We also find that alcohol has a fluid diuretic effect. It actually gets rid of fluid, so constitutes uh, blood pressure problems. And you mentioned there about your patient actually having falling risk. So we see that from time to time. The other problem as well is patients who are diabetic. And this is one of the biggest issues we come across is patients who are diabetic medications and um, their sugar levels are actually dramatically reduced when they're actually consuming alcohol, which can get people into a lot of problems, especially if they're not uh, 
aware that this actually is a problem. So make sure they're aware of what they can have. The other thing as well is in terms of the uh, antibiotics. Certain antibiotics cannot be used with alcohol uh, and uh, it can have some uh, quite severe side effects as well. So do ask your doctor exactly whether or not the antibiotic you're prescribed you can actually drink with it. Um, so I don't know if there's anything there that you want me to touch upon anything more at all or... Um, interaction of alcohol with warfarin. Warfarin mm. is a medication quite frequently used for blood clots and uh, heart conditions and a lot of my patients are on warfarin. Yeah and I have a lot of experience actually in patients actually using the, uh, uh, the alcohol uh, either chronically or actually just now and again and we're, and we're going to use the word binge drinking here which is a term we're using to say that people are consuming vast quantities of alcohol within a, a two-hour period. One thing to just to before we leave here is that it doesn't make a difference what size you are, your alcohol requirements can vary dramatically. So even though it says 14 units in a week, some people require or can actually have severe side effects with a lot less. Mm -hmm. Depending on the body mass. Depending on the when body you mass. say require, uh, you you mean the <laughs> tolerability, isn't it? I mean, there is no well, yeah, requirement yeah, yeah, in yeah. alcohol. If you don't want to drink it, you don't have to. It's not a requirement. Uh, very but, true. Good but point. I absolutely take your point, Michael. So depending on your body mass, um, it can, of course, uh, even 14 units might be too much for you. Okay. So our top tips on how to continue enjoying your alcohol safely as you grow older are, from me as a geriatrician, half the amount of alcohol you, are, you were drinking as a younger adult into your old age. In some of you, however, depending on your underlying medical conditions and medications, you might have to cut down more than by half. Mm -hmm. And maybe stop altogether. I know I promise you that I'm not going to tell you to stop drinking alcohol, but in some of you, it might be necessary. And my top tips actually from a pharmacist point of view is to be aware of what medicines that you're actually taking and whether they do have an interaction with alcohol, but also to be aware that you may be taking a medicine that could be enhanced dramatically by alcohol. Even small amounts of alcohol can make you very drowsy and therefore it could have implications on your driving ability. And also lastly, that some cough mixtures have up to 10% alcohol actually in the liquid itself, which could in theory put you over the limit. So be much aware of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Subscribe.